Yes, welcome to the Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2016 overview. My name is Christoph Reichert from CBR Technology out of uh, California. And I'd like to uh, present to you an uh, overview and general concepts that are being used by Microsoft Navision or NAV product. Uh, Navision is a European company that was purchased by Microsoft back in 2002 and is now the leading financial management solution of the Microsoft platform using Microsoft SQL Server as a um, underlying database and is therefore highly scalable. Um, to start off with, uh, a word about system architecture. Uh, this solution has a, a PC client, which is what you're looking at right here with the um, uh, standard um, you know, navigation functions that you might be familiar with with other Microsoft products like Outlook and things like that uh, with navigation bars and main content bars and dashboards and things like that. But I also wanted to show you uh, the web client, which is um, in fact um, very similar to the interface. Um, it's of course based on the exact same data set, the same database. No synchronization engine is necessary because this uh, web client interfaces with the SQL database directly. So as you are going through the system and navigating through the system, you will see that the user interface is quite similar um, with regards to either the PC client or the web client. Obviously, as a web client, you now have the ability to deploy the solution rather uh, flexibly uh, throughout your organization, either as an internal uh, web resource or, of course, uh, through the Internet as a hosted solution, either running on your own server or running on a hosted server. Uh, certainly, Microsoft Azure is one of the options you have available as a server um, device that allow you to uh, roll this solution out to a large number of uh, decentralized resources quite easily. Um, using Coming back to my NAV client here, um, you can see that the task bars and the navigation bars and things like that are uh, virtually identical, identical, but they are just located in different uh, positions. What I wanted to sh talk about today is um, also a basic um, module overview. And to start with that, I'm going to go into the department section here. So the department sections, if you are a super user, which has access to all modules, you will see an, a basic um, understanding of the function that Microsoft NAV has to offer. Specifically in the financial management side, you certainly will see your core financial management modules such as general ledger, accounts receivable, accounts payable, fixed asset management, and of course inventory control. Uh, they also have a cash management module, a cost accounting module, and a cash flow module, uh, which incorporates mo you know, data from accounts receivable and accounts payable, and the banking module um, to give you a forecast with regards to cash flow. Uh, fixed asset module, of course, supports your standard uh, depreciation methods and, of course, interfaces with the remainder of NAV with regards to either purchase order processing or uh, accounts payable to match uh, a AP and PO transactions into the fixed asset module directly. Uh, finally, we're also uh, moving down the, uh, the line here. We have a sales marketing module, which um, deals with sales order processing primarily and marketing activities. Um, sales order processing, of course, is pretty straightforward, but when it comes to marketing, there's things like campaigns and opportunities that you can list in here, which would we call a light CRM type capability. Uh, NAV does interface with the Microsoft CRM product as well, which gives you a full blown uh, CRM solution. But many of our clients find the NAV light CRM capabilities with campaign tracking and opportunity tracking uh, in NAV already quite sufficient for their CRM requirements. Uh, in order processing, of course, uh, you do have your standard sales quotes and sales order transactions. What's important to note here as well, though, is that you have um, capabilities of what's called blanket sales orders, which allow you to track commitments from customers um, against a, um, a specific transaction, and it updates the sales orders to blanket sales orders automatically. Of course, we have sales returns so for RMA, or Return Merchandise Authorization Processing as well, uh, certainly sales credit memos, and of course, invoices as well. Um, you'll see some references in here to requests for approval and approval. So NAV has a complete set of workflow management capabilities built into the solution, which allows you to uh, handle 
requests for order approval on any portion of NAV, including transactions, which is what this is referring here. So sales orders may need to get approved by a manager before they can get uh, processed. But of course, you will also find it on the accounts payable side, purchasing side, and on the onboarding of master records. So customer master records or vendor master records, if there is a um, onboarding process that needs to be complied with in NAF, you can set up a workflow surrounding those types of uh, capabilities. Coming back to my, I'm kind of switching back and forth in the interface, you can kind of get a feel for uh, what you have available here for your, in, in terms of options, um, looking at, um, you know, items and things like that here, you can see you have the standard item list functionality, that's a very standard functionality, kind of an Excel type sheet and you can change these columns around and sort them around in any sequence that you like. Uh, the functions you saw in the PC client are also up here in the web client. Um, same logo, same description, a slightly different presentation just because it's a web browser rather than a PC client. So um, that was kind of a, a, a piece, that, a critical piece I wanted to show you as well. Um, coming back to my PC client here real quick, um, on the uh, purchasing side, uh, moving on to the purchasing piece of it, uh, we have uh, planning capabilities as well, which um, gets you into production forecast uh, planning. Uh, certainly you have a full manufacturing module as well, which also can be uh, deployed as a light manufacturing module, which would be things like assembly orders. Uh, the system also has service order capabilities and job costing capabilities. Uh, depending on the type of organization you are, you might combine some or all of these add-on modules. Uh, well, they're not really add-on modules, but, you know, granules, what, what NAV calls granules in your particular uh, system as well. Uh, when it comes to order processing and the purchasing side, you also have this purchase quote capabilities, which uh, gives you the ability to put in an RFQ for a number of vendors before you do award the business to a particular vendor with a purchase order. So this concept of purchase quotes, purchase orders, and then again, blanket purchase orders uh, that would record a, a commitment from your organization towards a vendor um, uh, is also capable, you know, is also part of the purchase order module as well. Well, a nice feature in NAF uh, certainly as well as a purchase return transaction. So as you're re receiving product that do not meet your quality control um, uh, expectations, you can process a purchase return to the vendor immediately, which would um, certainly update inventory and uh, issue a credit memo and accounts payable for that vendor automatically. Um, and so again, here you'll see some references to requests for approval and approval request entries. And these all uh, relate to the workflow management module capabilities that you have in NAV. Uh, finally, um, in inventory, you have the capabilities of uh, certainly tracking items and non-stock items, um, as well as making adjustments and journal entries directly into your inventory sub-ledger with an update to the general ledger as well. I'll have a, for a, a bit more detailed conversation here about that in a little bit. Now, in addition to all of these core financial management uh, functionalities that we described here so far, uh, you also have a warehouse management module. So warehouse management module for those distribution wholesale manufacturing organizations that are looking to track spe uh, location of specific items in specific bins um, and warehouses, of course, and in here, you have the ability to link your source documents, which could be things like purchase orders, purchase returns, sales orders, sales returns, any transaction that moves inventory to specific warehouse transactions. So the warehouse transactions you have are things like warehouse receipts, warehouse shipments, uh, and then we have uh, putaways and pick orders as well here. So this would allow you to, uh, to again, manage the entire warehouse management solution uh, as part of the NAV solution that's built into the system. It's not an add-on module. It comes with the extended pack. It is in an additional license you need to acquire from Microsoft, but it is um, all standard code in NAV. It's not an add-on or plug-in by a third party. Um, 
Of course, you can handle goods on an order by order basis or on a multi order basis. A lot of people in in uh, e store fulfillment nowadays and interfaces with um, with e commerce uh, uh, websites have the ability to fulfill orders either on a one by one basis or to consolidate multiple orders in a single pull. So when you pull or or pick items out of inventory. You don't need to go in there and pull in each order at a time, but you can consolidate multiple orders, do one run through the warehouse and pick everything at the same time. Uh, when it comes to inventory, certainly there are some warehouse operations surrounding physical inventory counts. The system supports cycle counting as well. We'll get into that in just a little bit more uh, further detail in just a moment. Uh, we briefly touched on manufacturing. So if you're a manufacturing company, you have complete manufacturing capabilities as well. Uh, bill of materials, uh, you can do routing. So this concept of having a bill of material for the components as well as a bill of material uh, or a routing document that um, translates a process rather than an item component list is also standard functionality in NAF. You have capacity tracking and capacity planning regarding machine centers and work centers in NAF that allow you to uh, do capacity um, Re, uh, analysis and reporting on your machine and work centers. Um, and again, uh, all of this interfaces with the remainder of the system as well. So of course, in integration to purchase orders, transfer orders, uh, service orders, jobs, all of that is standard functionality in NAF as well. It's time to, uh, when it becomes time to execute on manufacturing, you have concepts of planned production orders versus firm planned production orders and released production orders. And you can do what if scenarios and if management asks you to make a certain number of finished units, you can uh, do a planned production order that will indicate any shortcomings on either machine capacity, work center capacity, or item component capacity, you know, availability of inventory certainly. Uh, when it comes to costing, uh, certainly the standard costing functionalities are built into NAF and this concept of uh, either using LIFO 5 or average moving is augmented by uh, average costing, uh, I'm sorry, standard costing as well. And then finally, um, getting into the service management module, uh, this is for clients that uh, maintain equipment um, or provide pro uh, services for clients. And uh, here you can track service contracts, service quotes you did, uh, translate them into service invoices. You have timesheet tracking capabilities um, and can um, track outside resources and subcontractors as well as part of this process. Now, uh, having spoken about um, a workflow management, I wanted to make sure I uh, mention that as well. Workflow management, again, is throughout the entire system here, and you have workflow templates that you can utilize that are predefined um, versions of templates that were defined by Microsoft. You can modify these templates, but these span from various areas in the system, uh, primarily surrounding sales and marketing transactions and customers. So these are all templates that are already available in NAF uh, out of the box and you can certainly modify these templates or modify the individual actual workflows that you want to use. Uh, also a word about the change log. A change log in NAF is the ability to um, track activity that is happening in the system and you can specify what particular tables is, are, being, um, are being monitored and updated. And you have the ability to track changes to insertion of the table, modification of the table, or deletion of the table. And when you track that information, you have the ability to pick specific fields that you want to track only, or you can turn on all field, fields. So an, an example of that would be if you are in the customer, um, if you're in the customer, um, section of the system, you could uh, potentially just uh, look for um, the change to payment terms or the change to credit limit or things like that that you want to track. And this would be a good way to, um, to do that quickly. So for example, here's the item database. If I click on here, I can say mo track all modifications to that item, but only to some fields. And when I do the drill down on this, it shows me all the fields that I have in that database. And I can say, okay, just log changes to the description and maybe the unit price 
uh, or the costing method of this particular table. And the reason you might want to do this is because um, you want to keep any, any change log tracking certainly increases the overhead on the database and typically you want to focus on the fields and tables that are important for you to track uh, versus not not important and just creating overhead by tracking everything. So that's quite uh, nicely done here in the Microsoft NAV solution as well. So this is called the change log. Other systems may refer to this as the um, audit uh, trail as well. Uh, so we talked about change log, workflow management, and finally I wanted to show you the um, uh, web services capabilities in uh, NAV as well. So these are out of the box. Uh, NAV ser and web services that you can publish out there and NAV supports OData as well as SOAP. Uh, so these are REST methodologies and REST list methodologies. So you can make these obviously public, um, uh, public uh, resources um, and you can fairly easily create additional information. So for example, if I want to expose my customer maintenance page to the web, I can simply go in here and pick the object that I want to um, I want to um, expose. In this case, it's a page in NAV. You pick the page that you want to expose. In my case here, for example, I have the customer card that I want to expose to, um, to the internet. Uh, you can uh, give it a, a name that you choose yourself. You can make it public or not public. As you make it public, you can make it, um, you get a URL resource. In my case, I'm using a local workstation, so it's not a server-based URL, but uh, of course you can also make this a uh, encrypted HTTPS page uh, once you uh, register a certificate, security certificate for the SSL um, communication. So that's a word about web services, quite powerful and quite uh, easy to interact with. And so having uh, kind of given you a brief overview, I wanted to drill down um, into the sales marketing side of the system and take a look at customers, for example, to kind of give you a sense for what kind of capabilities you see here. This is a sample company with um, co a company called Kronos USA. This is all fictitious data. These companies do not exist. Um, but if you go in here, certainly you have your basic information about the customer. Um, contact information, certainly you can have multiple contacts per uh, customer, salespeople, there's a concept in NAV called responsibility center, which is different than a salesperson. These are internal teams that are responsible or persons that are responsible for this customer. This is usually when your AR or AP department is so large that you're breaking up your customers or your vendors into groups. You can use responsibility centers to keep track of that. If you're using the service uh, management module, you have service zones you can com communicate with. You have, of course, your um, uh, basic phone information and so forth. Now in the invoicing section of the system it gets a bit more interesting in that um, you have ability to create general uh, business posting groups and tax business posting groups and these drive functionality with regards to posting and pricing in the system. Um, and then you have uh, discount groups that a customer can be part of as well. Uh, the system does support not just the US sales tax but also um, European VAT, value added tax, and in the system you'll see some references to those um, fields here as well. Finally, in the payment section, this is quite interesting and a bit unusual and more coming from the European model, but when you have a payment term, uh, in addition to having a term of payment, you also can record a default payment method. Uh, and that's quite slick in terms of tracking capabilities for that customers and how they typically would pay you uh, rather than just the terms. Um, we talked about cash flow management module. There's a payment calendar code here that you can assign to the customer. So even though their terms may be net 30, they're always f six days late or something. And you can put that into, into this mode here as well. Um, and then uh, sh uh, just looking at the shipping section here, of course, you have default shipping locations and agent codes. Here's another interesting area in NAF, it's separation of a shipment agent from a shipment service code. So uh, here you can record that normally you ship this particular customer, not just UPS, but maybe UPS second day or something as well, which is uh, related to the carrier. So if I select UPS 
and then I see a, a listing of uh, carriers that are referencing to that particular agent. Uh, shipping time would be a default um, indicator where you can say something like three days. So this would um, calculate an expected delivery time for a date for you. Also in NAV you have a calendar capability and customized calendar capabilities so NAV will know um, that uh, this customer is in Canada and Canadians have a Monday off that's not a holiday in the US and as, uh, as a result of that you can assign customers to different base calendars and even have custom calendars where you can record company specific events. Finally you have, of course a FASB 52 compliant module here which is multi-currency capability uh, multi-currency um, code will he allow here uh, the, the recording of the default currency you want to do business with and finally the multi-language capability which is also quite slick in that you can record a default language that you want to do business with this customer and uh, in NAV as you print forms you can use this indicator to um, switch the, the, for the language of the form itself. Um, and so that's kind of an overview of a customer. I wanted to do a quick overview of the item as well. So let me switch over to the item. Another way to navigate in NAF is to do a search up here on the top right hand side and just picking from the list here. Sometimes that's faster than going through your navigation bar. Um, so here are items that are set up for a particular, um, for this particular uh, sample company as well. And when you look at the item card, you kind of get a sense for some of the capabilities that NAF has. Uh, surrounding uh, item categories and product codes that you can group and subgroup your items in. Um, if you're not using the full-blown uh, WMS warehouse management solution, you can just record a simple shelf number in here and as to where to find this item in your warehouse. Um, if there's stockout warnings or if you want to prevent inventory, you can set that up on a default system level or on an item by item basis. Uh, custom me method is quite nice here. You have LIFO, FIFO, average of course, standard we refer to in the manufacturing side of things. Specific is an additional option which is referring to serial numbers. So if you're tracking serial number level information in NAF, you can track a specific cost for that particular serial number you're dealing with, which is quite nice. Now in addition to regular costing, you have landed cost capabilities where you can record either a fixed amount of a percentage of direct cost as a landed cost and add them to your last direct cost. So the direct cost is referring to the last time you purchased this item from your vendor uh, directly, wherever that may be internationally, but you can add either an amount or a percentage to that direct cost as a landed cost in your system. Uh, some of these that are posting is, you know, groups and things are pretty straightforward. They just drive GL distribution and things like that. When you're replenishing the item, you have some choices as to whether or not you're buying the item, you're producing it in the manufacturing suite, or you're using the light manufacturing module called an assembly entry in NAF as well. Lead time calculation, this is per item. So when you are purchasing this item, it may take you five days to get this item. So you can put a 5D in here, and this will be used for um, recommendations to during the purchasing process, uh, as well as um, pre-defaulting your purchase order documents with uh, expected delivery and uh, shipment dates. You can record a default vendor and item number in here as well. Um, and you can, um, from the production point of view, record details surrounding the manufacturing module. So all of these sections here dealing with production only apply if the item is being produced and you can uh, have different manufacturing uh, policies here whether or not you make to stock and make to order if the, what routing number sequence you have to go through the production bomb that's related to this item and flushing methods scrap percentages and things like that quite powerful if you're using a fixed order reorder quantity you have reorder points and reorder quantities that you can set in here but there's a number of options on what kind of reorder policies you can do here um, again for this particular item uh, so this is um, certainly fixed or reorder quantities, the most commonly used one in the U.S., but uh, some people, of course, do by order, so they only carry an item if they have an order for it. They have maximum quantity approach or lot-for-lot lot approach as well. 
Um, finally, when it comes to foreign trade, you need to also be able to classify it into tariffs and tariff numbers. So in here you can assign tariff codes to each item. You can record the country of origin that this product is being purchased from, gross and net weight. These were the item tracking codes we talked about a little bit ago, which relate to the fact that you can make this particular item lot number or serial number specific, and you can record what level of lot number or serial numbers you have. And to drill down on that real quick, just to give you an idea, is um, you have the ability either on the inbound or on the outbound side to record or turn on or off serial numbers and lot numbers for this particular item. And so if you produce it, for example, you may not have lot or serial numbers on the inbound side, but you only have them on an outbound side um, or, you know, something along um, the lines of being able to uh, uniquely identified specific functions in here and where you want to track it and where you do not want to track lot numbers. So that's quite nice um, and gives you a lot of flexibility. There's also an expiration date uh, functionality and a uh, uh, first um, uh, a concept of fulfilling orders first with lots that are about to expire so you can do expiration date calculations in here. If, the, if you're using the warehouse management module you have this uh, concept of put away templates um, physical inventory counts where you can deal with um, fast moving and slow moving items and how often a year you count it. If you're using this functionality of the system, it will keep track of your next start date and uh, last count date and things like that automatically. So quite powerful and um, an, an overview and capability of some of the capabilities of NAV. In the uh, navigation option here also, I wanted to point out a couple other things. Um, of course, you have variants as well. So meaning a variant is an item that's very much like this item, but maybe having a slightly different size or color choice. This is usually used in a garment uh, or textile industry to keep track of this item. So if you have the same t-shirt in five different colors and 10 different sizes, you would create a matrix of variants and it would be treated in NAV as a single item. Um, and when you and when you inventory it and sell it and make it, uh, you can deal it with it on a variant by variant basis. So quite powerful capability there. Um, there is a substitution capability if if you out of this item in the production or sales order fulfillment side of things, uh, what other items would uh, be uh, substitutable to this item, um, as well as a cross reference function in here. In this cross reference could be uh, relating to either customers or vendors or barcode information. So if you buy this item from another vendor and you want to track their part number, you can put this into this cross-reference table. There's also a customer cross-reference, of course, on the same screen. So if you're selling this item to a customer, you can keep track of their item number and description and unit of measure that defaults to them and things like that. Quite powerful also is this barcode concept. So many consumer product manufacturers have different barcodes for individual units versus uh, case packs of, some, of items. And in this cross-reference, you can use that as well.